all living things die. This can be due to old age, disease, by accident, or by natural or man-made disaster. To ensure their continuation of species, so they do not go extinct, living things reproduce. As we learned in our very first video, what is biology? Reproduction is a characteristic unique to living things. Non-living things obviously cannot reproduce. In today's video, we will discuss what asexual reproduction is and what are some of its types. There are two major types of reproduction, sexual and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is reproduction that involves the fusion of two reproductive cells or gametes. Gametes are sex cells, specifically produced by organisms for sexual reproduction. Gametes can be male or female, depending on the type of cells they produce. These are not needed in case of asexual reproduction, as there are no male and female structures involved in this process. Asexual reproduction is the production of new individuals that does not involve fertilization, that is, there is no fusion of two reproductive cells. In asexual reproduction, organisms reproduce by mechanisms like budding, spore formation, or vegetative propagation. In such mechanisms, organisms produce identical copies of themselves by reproduction. Vegetative reproduction or propagation is a form of asexual reproduction found in plants. It usually involves the growth of a new part of a plant, usually a bud or a stem, which eventually becomes separated from the parent plant to form a new individual. In this way, several plants can be produced from a single parent plant. Did you know that a very common root plant that we use in our food every day is also a way of a plant to reproduce asexually? Yes, ginger is one of those, and so are onions. Many flowering plants reproduce vegetatively by means of underground storage organs such as ginger and onions. Gingers come under a broader category of rhizomes and onions under bulbs. Tubers, like potatoes, are also a way of plants to reproduce asexually. These underground storage organs are also called perennating organs because they help plants survive year to year, a process called perination. The food stored in the underground storage organ enables the plant to survive through unfavorable climatic conditions. When the return of favorable conditions, the buds utilize up the stored food and develop rapidly into new plants. Flowers are fascinating. They have captured our fascination since childhood and have become the heroes of many of our childhood stories and movies. From curing an ill queen and giving long shiny hair to a princess, to giving sweet nectar to birds and bees, we all love flowers. But what are they? In this video, we will find out what flowers are and what they are made of. In flowering plants, sexual reproduction involves the fusion of special cells called gametes. There are special mechanisms like pollination and fertilization to ensure that male and female gametes meet. We all know how seeds grow to become a new plant. Seeds are found in fruit and each fruit is produced by a flower. The flower is the specialized shoot which bears the reproductive organ in flowering plants, the general parts of a flower. Flowers may occur singly on plants or in definite clusters called inflorences. A complete flower consists of these following parts. Pedicel. A pedicel is a flower stalk. Some flowers have no pedicels and are called sessile flowers. Receptacle. The receptacle is the enlarged end of the flower stalk on which the other parts of the flower are born. Sepals. The part where modified leaves cover a flower bud is called sepal. The covering also protects the other parts of flower buds. All the sepals together make up the calyx. The sepals usually form the outermost hall of floral leaves, but some flowers, for example, hibiscus, have another hall of floral leaves outside the sepals, which make up the epicalyx of the flower. Petals. Petals are modified leaves, forming the conspicuous part of the flower. They are usually brightly colored in insect-pollinated flowers. The hall of petals is called the corolla. Petals have two important functions. One, to attract insects for pollination, as petals often have striking colors, and two, to provide a landing platform for insects. Stamens. The andresium is the collective name for the stamens of a flower that produces pollen grains. It consists of a filament bearing an anther. The anther is usually made up of two lobes, each containing two pollen sacs. The pollen sacs contain pollen grains. The pollen grains are produced by meiosis, and so they contain the haploid number of chromosomes. 
each pollen grain gives rise to two haploid male gametes, which are reproductive nuclei of the flower. When the anther matures, it lobes split, setting free pollen grains. Pistil The pistil, also known as gynoecium, is the female part of the flower. It consists of one or more units called carpels. A carpel consists of an ovary, a style above the ovary, and one or more stigmas. The stigma is a swollen structure at the end of a style which receives the pollen grains. The ovary contains one or more ovules. A mature ovule has a female gamete inside, called the ovum. The region in the ovary to which the ovules are attached is called the placenta. The ovule is attached to the placenta by funicle. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.